It's so exciting to be talking to you uh, in a break between shots. We're here in a warehouse in Lilyfield in Sydney. Uh, it's late at night and we're doing our first film project, which is really thrilling. This film came about from necessity. Uh, when COVID-19 became a pandemic, like many other companies in the world, we were forced to cancel our live performances. And at the time, rather than just sit out and wait to see when the theatres might reopen, we decided to forge ahead and do a project. And at the time I thought, what could we do that we have control over? And I thought that a short film project would be great. I've always been drawn to this exceptional composer of the 17th century, and that's Barbara Strozzi. And we looked really closely into who this woman was and what time was she living in. And the person she was was someone who was incredibly intelligent, incredibly well known in terms of her publication, but never reached the fame of her male contemporaries. So she knew as a woman with these radical opinions about love and sex and relationships and breakups and independence, that she was kind of putting her head on the chopping block, so to speak, and proudly. The music and the stories of these madrigals are at times beautiful and gorgeous and sumptuous, at times stark and cynical and brutal, but ultimately, I think she was really in the pursuit of telling a truthful human story. I didn't know who Barbara Strozzi was and was, was doing a lot of research when Con, you know, rang me up and invited me to collaborate on this project and just was blown away by, I guess, how much she achieved in her body of work and the fact that she achieved it in the circumstances of that era when, when being a female and creating art was, was so much more challenging than it is today. Each madrigal is about three minutes, the length of a, of a pop song, really. And people of the time would have sung these madrigals and just chosen at will which ones they would like to sing. And when we realised that the overarching theme of the set itself was love, we then thought about sort of constructing a three-act opera, as it were, out of these madrigals. And the first act was going to be idealised love, the love of youth. And then we thought the second act should be a, a challenge of that, a problematization of love, the challenges of love, the vicissitudes of love. And then we wanted the third act to be sort of the wisdom that one might achieve after going through life, um, some sort of acceptance. There are major differences between directing opera on the stage and opera for film. And Erin and I were very keen at the beginning of the process that we're not filming a concert. We're doing something that is specifically for the screen. And I think what screen can do for me as a director is a level of kind of visual precision. So we want to create a kind of a really sumptuous, detailed visual world. And effectively, something that cinema gives you that the stage can't is the beauty of the close-up, that we can see the glint and the thoughts deep into someone's eyes. And I think that's something so special and unique that we're really going to tap into. I love live performance, but I also love making recordings because it's an opportunity for artists to refine what we do as singers and instrumentalists. Our wonderful friends at Angel Place at City Recital Hall let us come in and we all came back into the theatre and we were almost crying, actually. To come in there and record this works was really special for us. And now we're in the film process and this is my first time working on a film set and it's so different to what I expected because uh, I won't tell you exactly what time it is right now but uh, very long days. But I am just in awe of my colleagues on set. I've fallen in love actually with this process. Barbara Strozzi is, she wrote a lot for solo soprano, for female voice. And it's really interesting talking to the, the female singers in this project because they all say immediately, oh, you can just tell that this is a woman who sings. You know, she writes so idiomatically for the female voice. She talks about the sensual beauty and love of singing. And these madrigals are just full of references to that being a metaphor for love and joy. And I think that's the power of Barbara Strozzi, Babs as we call her affectionately on set. She loves music, 
She loves love, she loves life. And she wrote these when she was 25. It just, that youthful energy comes across in every madrigal. And I know that will come across in this project too. Yeah, definitely the social distancing and rehearsal is unusual because <laughs> we like to feel each other's breath and feel each other's movement. So I think having that three metres apart has been challenging, but we're getting used to it and we're so keen to just make it work just so we can, we can do this. And obviously now being an angel place, the acoustic is incredible. So it's almost like we don't need to be that close. We can hear each other bouncing off the walls. There absolutely is no substitute for being in a room with other people. And we were, we've been doing the auto recording here and it felt like I was coming back to my church. <laughs> it feels like Christmas, Easter, Hanukkah, the whole lot all together, mushed in all at once, like, you know, just received a, a lolly bag. The breath that you take together, the energy in the room, I mean, I really hope that it translates through the screen into people's lounge rooms yeah, that it'll become a classic, what can I say? Looking forward to receiving my first Oscar. <laughs> and only. Of course COVID has changed me because it's changed everybody and it's changed the world and you look at your place within it. It's a real kind of, for me, as an artist, a stark reminder of what is the work that I find important and what is the work that I really want to do and the work that you hope will make a kind of lasting impact because you're kind of reminded of the, you know, the, the fleeting nature of everything that's around us. So I may as well do my best to kind of attempt to make something that rings true and lasts. So it's a nice sort of ability in the middle of all of this sort of the uncertainty and the chaos and the suffering that's going on, an opportunity to really reconfigure and think about what are the important human stories that I would like to tell and like to be a part of. We train for years and years, and all we want is to sing with others, make music with others, and for Pinch Cut to allow that to happen is just such a blessing. So I will forever be thankful to Pinch Cut for inviting me. Erin Halyard has such an incisive musical vision and also creates this wonderful space for collaboration where we can really experiment and share ideas, even though we, we're metres apart and you know you can't hear the person on the other side of the room. All of those things just fall away because it's just so joyful to be making music. This film project was an opportunity to employ and work with uh, some of my dear friends and colleagues um, and also favourites of pinch gut audiences who have been basically hanging around since we've been ordered into lockdown and also not been able to perform in theatres. And for them, it has been a really emotional experience. A lot of tears have been shed at the, the joy of getting together and making music again. But that in itself, I'll never forget this experience. Um, this is a defining moment in my life and I'm sure in all the colleagues that I'm working with. I'm really hoping that this project will bring Pinch Gut into more people's lives. They will see the enduring love that we have for this repertoire, which I find really important, and more importantly for the work of this extraordinary composer, Barbara Strozzi. <laughs> <laughs>